Hello and welcome to episode 16 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Nick. This is Brad. So we just finished episode 15. What was the name of that challenge? Treasure fun- Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia Trivia Challenge. That's original. <laughs> yeah, so um, got some cool prizes, uh, as you may remember. I got a Triforce pin. And Nick got Mega Man Anniversary Collection. Yeah, I'm super stoked on that. I've been borrowing this game from Brant and Brad for the last, <laughs> what, five or six weeks, it seems like. Just trying to play all the Mega Man that they've been playing. And uh, now I got my own copy, so I'm sure Brad's happy about that, too. <laughs> I actually I actually beat Part 8 already. Oh, my God. And my PlayStation just burnt out, so I have to get it repaired. My PlayStation 3, so... <laughs> I can't, I can't can't play it anyway. I just wanted you to have it so you could no, yeah, yeah, play yeah. through all the games and stuff. So for sure. So I'm super stoked to be back. I'm so happy to be doing this. It's been like I've been having podcast withdrawals. <laughs> um, so super stoked. Yeah, we're doing this on an odd night. Uh, Nick is busy this weekend. Uh, I've got a lot of stuff to do this weekend as well. So we're recording. So even though it's a weekday night, it's it's good. I I like don't feel like oh i have to go to work the next yeah. day it's it's like i'm actually excited to do it so yeah and uh next weekend we're going to go to uh nick's house for a poker tournament right it's not going to be a tournament it's going to be a cash game but yeah it will be definitely a good night of poker same thing <laughs> <laughs> well no <laughs> <laughs> and we're also going to see kick-ass too right yeah oh uh, yeah i forgot about that i got to confirm that with the wife okay <laughs> no so do, so do i <laughs> I forgot about it. That's that's awesome. I think it comes out the day before. Yeah. So we'll go see it like the the morning of the seventeenth or something. We go to go to Blue Oaks. That'd be awesome. I love that theater. I love that's that theater too. That's quite a trick for Brandon though. Yeah. He'll be okay. He'll, He'll be here. fine. He'll, he'll walk. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, treasure hunting. I've been treasure hunting for the past two weeks. Uh, relentless. Found some dude, some, some gems. Karen's like, you guys need to put a limit on your treasure hunting. It's really getting out of control. <laughs> yeah, that's what Jamila said. She said, "You're going treasure hunting again." I said, "Only if I find something, I'll buy it." And you know, it's a hit and miss. Um, sometimes I'll go places and not find anything. Sometimes I'll go and find a couple things. So, um, do you ever get a tromboner? What's that? A treasure hunting boner. <laughs> Uh, I haven't gotten one of those yet. Uh, I know what you're talking about. I've gotten one before, but not recently. When have you gotten one? Uh, probably when I found... When I went to that thrift store in Apple Hill. Oh, yeah. And found Tales of Destiny and Dino Crisis and something else. Mm-hmm. That, was, that was when I was really excited. Brad's cat's tripping. <laughs> <laughs> she sniffed the onion juice a, a few times. <laughs> she doesn't like uh, the doors being closed. Uh, <laughs> she thinks the kids are in danger when the cl- doors are closed. Uh, protective uh, cat. So the the only time I've gotten a tromboner is when I'm staring at my wife's tits. So uh, so what does that say about me? That you're weird. <laughs> okay. Like like inanimate objects. I don't even when I the treasure I find even the rare ones. It's I don't like. it's a figurative boner, not a okay, not a literal boner. <laughs> Okay, we got the same track in mind then. <laughs> Treasure hunting this week. So uh, we got our Will of Punishment, Will of Pleasure going on, which I need to go grab out of the garage. Um, do we just want to reveal items, take turns? or? Yeah, let's do, do that. Um, you get to avoid one of my items, right? Yes. So what, what do you avoid, the lowest item? No. Because I don't think it's fair for you to be able to avoid the highest item. It's at item. random. Okay. How are you going to make it random? He could lay out like all his stuff, and I could just like pull a number or something. Or after okay. it, after it's all done, we could lay it out, and I could spin the wheel and void like uh-huh. an even odd. Okay. All right. So I guess I'll now. Have you looked up the what your stuff is worth? No. Okay, I've looked up all my stuff, and if you look up your stuff before, I'll take your word for it because I know we don't cheat each other. Mm-hmm. For some stupid prize, so uh, who wants to go first? Uh, I could reveal. Well, I'll go with this thing since I don't even know the value of it. 
<laughs> Traveler stamp collection. Can I see that so I could display it for everyone? Don't make sure it doesn't close. So I found a book of stamps wow. at the Goodwill. Um, An Abu Dhabi stamp. It's uh, from 1976. It was they put it in the binder section, and um, for a dollar. And it's got, no wait a dollar a dollar. And it's got stamps from around the world. There's even I was looking through it today. There's even a German stamp with a swastika on it. What page is that on? It's in alphabetical order. order. So go to Germany. Unless it's under Deutschland. Is it under Germany? No. It's, <gasps> Look at that! Wow! <laughs> Shit, dude! Oh, and a fly just buzzed out of it like a gnat. <laughs> dude, if I get how like, are you gonna get the value of that? How are you gonna get? The value? I have no idea. <laughs> it would just have to be researched. Maybe um, this one. Maybe this can cancel out my other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Since they're this is what I found at the Goodwill. You're pulling out the big guns right now. <laughs> I posted this. I kind of was too excited not to post it. It's a Beatles 65 tribute album. Not a tribute album. Album. Uh, LP record. Not in the best of condition. But it was framed. And it has all the Beatles signatures. There's uh, Harrison. Ringo. Paul McCartney. Ringo is down here. And... Um, John Lennon. There's also George Harrison signed down here too. Yeah, they all. They, it looks like it's different, uh, different handwriting. Handwriting. So it, it is kind of hard to see, but you know, if it is authentic, that's like amazing. The how I found it is a girl is pushing out her little um, cart, her ye yellow cart of the Goodwill, and it was in a picture frame. So I just thought everybody else thought it was just a picture, so they donated it. And I bought it, pulled it open, and it was the actual record. Is that the only place where the signatures are? Are they inside the jacket? No. Oh. And I did look online for a few of the signatures. Uh, George Harrison, there's a website that actually authenticates it. Uh, there were a couple that matched that signature, but then a couple that didn't. Hmm. Like his H's were straight, they didn't have curves on them, but he did it differently. So I'm going to have to get it appraised somewhere. So I'm it. No. You said something about this one down here? Yeah, I thought that was someone else signed it, like one of the Beatles. It looks like they all signed it, like next to their pictures on the main picture here. Yeah. But then I don't know what this is down here. Yeah. Assuming that it's authentic, of course. Yeah. That's cool. I hope for your sake that it is. I'm telling you right now, if it is, we're about to get out of their ad spot on the <laughs> same day. <laughs> See, here's the actual uh, record. As you can see, it's in pretty good condition, like like it's never been played. No scratches. Beatles 65. I looked it up on eBay. Uh, a new one, a, a, a copy is going between 50 and 100. Brand new is like 200, and there was a signed Paul McCartney going that went for 2,500. So, and Paul McCartney's still alive. All the other ones are dead. Ring, Ringo still <laughs> Ringo's still alive, right? Yeah. So that was, I think, our stamp collection. That stamp collection, I'm so stoked or excited. I use that word a lot today. Stoked. Uh, to He's see. a big admirer of the Nazi Party. <laughs> <laughs> Sick hell. <laughs> yeah. So those stamps are awesome. Uh, I don't know if you wanted to leave them here or if you wanted to. No, I'll leave them here. Okay, I'll, 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 because I know Jamila doesn't like to ha have stuff. At, so I'll look at it and appraise them, and maybe we got a gold mine here, but we'll just void each other's. Yeah. And um, I'll take that and I'll, I'll use that as my void. So. Okay. Oh, that's cool. So, on even ground. What's your next treasure? Leftovers. <laughs> I was gonna say, what the fuck is that? <laughs> it's like brains. <laughs> Brain. Uh, I got this game for the PlayStation One. Oh, Vagrant Story, ten dollars. Eight ninety nine. Eight ninety nine. Is that good or bad? How, how much is it worth? I don't know. 
Are you gonna have to make me look it up? I'll look it up. <laughs> We're going price trading? Yeah, of course. I've never even heard of that game. Is that a decent game? Have you uh, I've it? never played it. I just know it's from Squaresoft, and Squaresoft usually goes Oh, it's, it is from Squaresoft. I've never played it, though. What's Squaresoft? They make the Final Fantasy games. <laughs> <Okay>. oh. <laughs> Before they were Square Enix, and Enix, or whatever I heard you say. Complete? Is that complete? Fuck. Do they have the booklet in there? <laughs> it's 24 bucks <laughs> <laughs> okay and it's got a collector CD in here stop shaking your head yes <laughs> this game I bought at the Goodwill for three dollars flashback <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> the quest uh -huh. For identity. Okay. I love that game. Really? I've never fucking heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> you want to buy it for twenty bucks? How much is it? Three dollars. No, how do you you say you already looked up your prices? I did, but I just want to make sure it didn't go up in price. Because <laughs> last time I looked, it was nine dollars. That's the the Jaguar version, right? Uh, no, it's Super Nintendo. Nine dollars. <laughs> okay, so we've got 24 <laughs> against 9. Special thanks to James Landrum for his uh, <laughs> donation. <laughs> or probably his parents. <laughs> Did you say it was worth 9? Yeah. You got it for 3? That's pretty good, dude. Props. Yeah. <laughs> so, I got this game for $1. fifty at the Goodwill. Fuck. <laughs> That's not Emerald, is it? Pokemon Emerald? How much is that worth? Uh, I just had it. $23.09. Try it's like a piss. <laughs> 23. I think I just swallowed that bug that flew out of that stamp. The <coughs> zombie bug. It's been in there since 1976. It's going to infect me. This game I got for seven dollars at Dimple. Mm -hmm. Yoshi Story. Ooh, worth fourteen dollars. Oh, there you go. Fucking bullshit right there. <laughs> Another Dimple find. Oh fuck. Oh, that shouldn't be worth that much. Sonic Adventures for a Dreamcast complete. Uh, we'll see about that. <laughs> Oh, that Yoshi story actually went down to ten ninety nine. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm glad I checked it again. Would you like to read the price for the complete version of Sonic Adventure? The top one or the oh fourteen dollars and ninety three cents. Fuck. Uh, putting a beat up, beat down. <laughs> I, I was I was not losing this time. What else you got? That's hecka tight. That's hecka big. I, I didn't think it was that big. This is a complete version of uh, Megatron in, from Transformers Beast Wars. He actually changes into a, his Tyrannosaurus counterpart. And it took me like an hour to get him this far. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's hard to make him transform. But um, this is a special 10-year uh, anniversary. Edition, which is worth twenty five dollars. Oh wow! Sold on eBay for like thirty twenty five, so I'm going twenty five. So as you could see, I actually got pretty good at this. Huh. The good old Predacon still works. Beast mode. <laughs> wow! You got a broken ankle. He does. I need to fix that. <laughs> For all your collectors out there who want to make a bid on it, it's not actually broken. No, I didn't mean that. He's like, it's it, broken. It looks, yeah, it's, 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 it's jacked up. But it's easy. You just turn it the other way. It's fixable. It's not. Defective. Sorry, I didn't no, mean it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Talk your my product down. My next item. Yeah. 
And then Nintendo 64 Atomic controller. Purple? Really? Yeah. $9.99. What? I bought this for three bucks. Wow. Okay. I checked eBay. And so it's worth $10? Yeah, okay. I checked eBay. Alright. Next item. What I didn't know. That? I didn't know what the fuck this thing was. <laughs> Karen actually found it. Is it play Mega Sega Master or Master System? Yes, it plays Master System games oh, on your okay. on your Genesis. Huh. Makes it backwards compatible. It's complete. Uh, some of the Mag Master si Ma Master System games had cards that you put in instead of the cartridge, so you could play it that way. Huh. But you just slide it in your Genesis slot, open it up, put the Master System cartridge in. I could play Rambo now for the Master oh, System. Oh, right. 37 bucks. Oh, man. I couldn't believe it. How much did she pay for it? $2. Wow. It actually, the price tag was rubbed off and some Russian guy, he was checking us out and I was like, oh, we're going to get this for a good deal. <laughs> and he, we bought a basketball for $2. And then he looked at that and he's like, what is it? I was like, I don't know. It's like a, a controller or something. He's like, $2. I was like, you got it, <laughs> dude. Here we go. You still have more shit? Dude, I've been collecting for like two weeks. Damn. Have you tried that yet? The, yeah. It works? Yeah. Do you, nice. you play Rambo? Yeah. It sucks. Uh. <laughs> dude, no fucking way. Some douche just bought that out of my hands at Dimple. <laughs> How much is that worth? Super Mario All-Stars or Super Nintendo? Uh, just 14 this 14. <laughs> okay. How should I pay for it? To five ninety nine. I used to have this game. Yeah, there's one with uh, Super Mario World that is even more expensive. Really? I've never seen that. Yeah. We had it, huh? The one with Super yeah. Mario World. This is my final item. How many items do you got left? You still got more items? No, that's it. Okay. Um, yard sale. That's heck of tight. Celebi? Celebi. Foil. Uh, it's a promo uh, Pokemon binder. She was selling Pokemon cards, and they're all in like pretty good condition. Uh, so I don't know if you wanted to look through those and see if you could find anything good. But uh, it also came with a tin full of Pokemon cards too. Did you look at these yet? Yeah. Um, we got Darkrai Level X, Latios. Any first edition? No, these are all after. Uh, I don't think they have first edition anymore, do they? I thought they did. Maybe they don't. A lot of steel type cards. There's a, another dark ride foil. Did you look any of these up? Yeah. Oh, okay. That that only cost me fifteen dollars because the lady she didn't know anything about Pokemon. I'm sure they were her grandkids. You tell me the Sheldon, Sheldon, and Bastion. Bastion, yeah. That was kind of jacked up though. Yeah. One hundred seventy one dollars, eighty five. So those Pokemon cards saved my butt because otherwise I was going to lose. Alright. You want to spin the wheel? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course I want to spin the wheel. So you want to go first or you want me to go first? Uh, you can go first. Ten. Spin again. <laughs> Five. Extra half of half these. That's not that bad. <laughs> Here we go. Will of Punishment. Twelve? That's like twelve to me. Purple Nerfle. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have to expose your chest for this? No. No? Just through the shirt? Yeah. N now the um, extra half of half these is that on one item? Not usually, but I could do it this time since a lot of punishment, I mean, a lot of treasure was involved. <laughs> or what about um, on the highest um, That's fine. item? That's fine. Alright. Ready? Yep. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't know where it is. Dang! <laughs> <Hey! laughs> <No. laughs> <laughs> Did I even get it? 
that hurt. <laughs> 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 Look, compare it to the other one. <laughs> Look the same to me. Oh, this one's redder. <laughs> <laughs> you, you still shave your chest? <laughs> yeah. It gets hot in the summer. <laughs> Well, like, what what's worse, the corn dog or that? Uh, the corn dog. The first corn dog was worse. <laughs> the second one was that. Uh, well, I haven't given a titty twister in like. <laughs> I think we we used to give them to each other when we were mad at each other when we used to fight. <laughs> it seems like your nipples gotten bigger since then. <laughs> oh, heck, it hurts, dude. It still hurts. <laughs> Karen will get frisky and try to bite mine and like you can't have to like hold her head away and she'll like <laughs> turn into a what? dinosaur yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's crazy and Mila likes to bite too I'm like uh uh man vampire women <laughs> well Melissa not not that no mm. that's not a thing for her she's like no fucking comment alright so uh, Mega Man 7 yep game of the week we've been playing in, in case you couldn't catch on Mega Man 7 this game was a really weird game to me. Um, I couldn't believe how different it was from... It's like they tried to enhance everything about the game. In my opinion, it just wasn't... I mean, it was kind of cool, but it wasn't the best Mega Man. I would, I would rate it underneath the NES ones because it was just weird. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I, I totally agree. I, it was the least favorite of the Mega Man games that I've ever played, for sure. And that said, I mean, it was still better than most games, but it was uh, compared to other Mega Man games. Yeah, it's, it, it's just they tried too hard. It felt like they tried too hard to make it different, and it didn't need to be different. They had a a good formula, you know. Yeah, and I'm glad they got back to the roots in Mega Man Nine and Ten. Even though those games are so hard, I still haven't beat 9, and that game frustrates me to no end. Yeah, I tried playing it, and I, I was like, fuck this. <laughs> uh, so I don't think we're going to have 9 and 10 on our... Oh, hell no, I'm not playing <laughs> that shit. No. <laughs> uh, so why don't we just go ahead and go through each level, and we could say our, our little quip about it. Uh, I actually wrote down quite a few notes this time. Uh, can, can I... Um, I want to show you something real quick. Okay. It's, it it kind of involves Mega Man, but I just wanted to get it out there before I forget. Um, I was playing this with Logan and Sam. They were watching me play, and I thought it was so hilarious. As soon as the game opened up and Mega Man's rolling around in that gay ass little truck <laughs> yeah. with his name Eddie, the uh, yeah the robot, the dude. robot. Uh, they're all riding along, and the action starts coming, and they're like, Mega Man, you gotta go. Here's your helmet. <laughs> and they put on the little safety man hat, <laughs> and Logan just started busting up. And I just thought that was so funny. <laughs> and he was all excited. He's like, you get to play the game with that hat on? I was like, I don't think so. He goes, da -na, da -na, da -na. And then, yeah. I would have preferred that hat over the one I gave him, because that helmet really didn't look right on him. Yeah. So go ahead and pass this around. Take a look at that. Okay. So this was posted on that Reddit website. Yeah. As my five year old sister just beat Soul Calibur 2, I have never been so proud. What the fuck? I could not resist. Did you did you post something? Oh I did. I posted let me go to my posts. I mean really? You're gonna be proud of beating a fighting game? She probably threw that shit on easy. So I I uh let me go to and on, on this website, you could upvote and downvote other people's comments. And I got a lot of down downvotes for this comment. <laughs> uh, my comment was, probably on the easiest difficulty, <laughs> a retard with one hand can do that. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Uh, the, <laughs> Josh Blue. <laughs> and then the... Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then the... Um, the response was, come on guys, she's five. Uh, let's give her this achievement. This was her brother responding. In which, in which I replied, achievement with three question marks. Have her beat Mega Man 1 on NES without an emulator, then I'll be impressed. And then he, he uh, replied, we all had to start somewhere, and I just left it at that. 
<laughs> How old was this guy? I don't know. Douchebag, I swear. Uh, his, um, I guess I could give his Reddit uh, username. Oh, man. In case you guys want to flame him. Yeah, the treasure hunting for Nostalgia <laughs> Army is going to get him. <laughs> uh, it was... I mean, come on, guys. Beating a, ga a fighting game, she threw it on easy. I did button mashing. And Any she, button masher could do that. And you could spam a button for no end on easy. We got to get this guy. Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <For> sure. <laughs> I mean that's cool that she beat it and all, but I've never been so proud of her. When she beats a fighting game on easy, that's when you say, okay, it's time to tra take your training wheels off. Here's Mega Man 1. Play that. And I'll be so proud of you if you beat it. <laughs> okay, so this was it when I said... a uh, fucking cat could do that, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Remember Joe's sister uh, was beating everyone on Soul Calibur 2, and she was like four. <laughs> uh, so when I said uh, even a retard, retard could do that, um, they said, someone named Glass Armor, G-L-A-S-S-A-R-M-O-U-R, said, do not belittle the achievements of the young. And that's when I, in terms of achievement... With three question marks. Um, and then duct tape 817. So D U C K T A P E 817 was the user that w was the brother. And he said, honestly, guys, she is five. And then that's when he said, we all had to start somewhere. Yeah, we all have to start somewhere, but not to be the most proudest you ever been. I mean, come on. I'm, I'm sure when she started walking, you were proud of her. That's an achievement. When she used the potty, that's I'll be proud of her for that. But just being a game on easy, bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mega Seven. I'm uh, glad you showed that to me. That just <laughs> pissed me off. <laughs> oh, speaking of pissing people off, remember I I text you guys. I almost let the rage out when I was at Dimple. Yeah, what was that about? So I was at Dimple. I was at Dimple one day, uh, treasure hunting. And so, uh, Willie was getting a CD repaired, uh, one of his game discs, and, you know, I'm out there treasure hunting, and all of a sudden I come back up to pay for the game disc, and I see three Super Nintendo carts inside of their plastic case, like the dust covers. Yeah. I'm like, I want to see those. And this guy said, oh, um, we, I can't let you see those, they're for an employee, what? I said, well, can I just see them just in case he doesn't pick them up so I can put them on hold? They're for an employee, so I can't let you see those. I almost snapped. I don't know why, but I was just so pissed off that he said that to me. And Willie and Naja were there, so I had to tone it down real quick, and I had to leave before the rage came well, out. Well, I could tell you why he almost snapped, because you probably spent $50,000 at that store. Yeah, that's true. And... Because you ha at one time we had seven hundred points, uh, seven hundred points. Uh, that thirteen dollars is one point, so that's ninety one hundred dollars right there, that we spent at Dimple, and I think you were entitled to see those games. I think I was too. What you should have said is, uh, "Can I just look at them? I don't want to purchase them." But that that pisses me off. Yeah. Was it Dimple's uh, Sunrise downtown? Oh, down. Oh. <laughs> This faggot's downtown. Yeah, I was upset. Okay, Mega Man 7. Yeah, so uh, the intro level, uh, did you want to start off with the notes? The intro level was dumb. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the highlight of that whole game was Mega Man putting on the safety man hat. <laughs> I, I did notice in this one, the first thing I wrote down was that the invulnerability state is really short. It is. Like when you get hit? Yeah. Yeah. You know what? One thing I did like about this game that you couldn't do on any of the other games was that you could use the trigger buttons to switch between the different abilities, which was something that was... Maybe I, could you do that with the select button in the other games? I don't remember ever doing that. No. You no. could do it on that game, though, on, on all the on, other games. On all the other ones, you could do it on that one. They, no, they, but I, oh, I'm saying compared to like the regular yeah, yeah. Nintendo controller, yeah. obviously there's no trigger buttons. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, that... That was cool. That was cool. I'll give you credit for that. Because you didn't have to go to the the menu screen, switch your yeah. weapon, go through all that. The trigger thing was probably the one thing that I actually appreciated in this one. Mm -hmm. I like the shop. I actually did not like the shop. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. 
The only thing that I liked about the shop is it helped me beat the game that Wiley, fucking bastard. But um, and you only get four E tanks. You can only store four E tanks and an S tank, right? Yeah. But they're easy to get. I mean, oh, yeah. they're, they're cheap in the little shop thing. I mean, you accumulate what are they like little bolts, bolts throughout the game pretty quickly. <clears throat> um, yeah, I hated the idea of the shop. I, it just didn't really fit into my idea of what Mega Man is. And I kept collecting bolts throughout the whole fucking game. And I was like, okay, in one of these levels, there's got to be a hidden spot where you find the shop. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm just searching everywhere, and I can't find the shop anywhere. I'm like, what the hell? So I start pushing buttons on the title, on the menu select, on the enemy select screen. It don't let me in, and I didn't push select. <laughs> so I finally pushed select like the next day, and I was like, that's how you get in a fucking shop. <laughs> yeah, and I I didn't know I beat a few bosses in, and I, Brad let me know he's like push select to get in the shop. Oh, okay, and I passed that on to Nick because I didn't know how to get in there. Yeah, I probably I would have never known for for sure. <laughs> yeah, what are these bolts for? <laughs> <laughs> well, they ex they do explain at the at, in the intro what they're for, but you're right. I would I would have never found out how to get to the shop though. Hmm. Yeah, so this is the part where you fight Forte, right? Uh, yeah, uh, base in the U.S. version, Forte in the Japanese version. Forte in Trouble. Yep. But you don't fight Trouble. And uh, he's pretty easy. He's like, I don't know. But you... Um, you have to lose on him, right? Yeah. yeah. You lose on him. Like, there might be a way where you can beat him, and he's like, oh, you're strong, but I didn't bother to go yeah. back. And, you're talking about in the introduction yeah. screen? So that that's pretty much it for that. Let's go into the levels. Okay. You could uh, rattle off your levels and I'll uh, intervene when necessary. Okay, so... Uh, I don't think it, it matters, like, boss order. No. Really, just as long as you go through the levels. Yeah. All right, go ahead. So Cloudman, mm -hmm. I have down first. Uh, I The thing that pissed me about, off about this kit, that level is there was so many pits. There was, like, a lot of pits. It was like a clone of Airman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Level. The guys that uh, were the most difficult for me on that level actually looked like Iron Man with the, fun, the fans yep. coming in their chest. Those guys were bullshit. <laughs> they would they're, they're, they would invert the fan so that they would not only blow you away, but they would also suck you in. So if you were standing on a platform that was, you know, very small, you had to either run away from it or run towards it, depending on how the air airflow was going. It was kind of a bitch, but that's to be expected. It's a Mega Man game. Yeah. There's always got to be some pushy level where it, you can't jump all like you want to all the time. <clears throat> yeah, so I finally got to Cloud Man. Uh, pretty easy. I mean, I, I just used my Mega Buster on that one. I didn't. That was the first one I went through. I imploded that obese mom, honey, boo boo bitch. <laughs> Damn. I rained on his parade. <laughs> I just beat him. <laughs> uh, I, I did write down a few things for Cloud Man. Uh, such a, like I said, such a ripoff from Air Man. He's got the um, robots that push and pull you, like in part two, and also the birds that chop the eggs. Those those kept reappearing throughout yeah. the game too. But the the boss himself. I didn't think it reminded me of Airman. Are you talking about no, the no, no, boss? just the level. Just the level. Yeah, yeah. The boss was actually pretty original. I don't yeah. remember ever seeing any boss that looked like it. he didn't even have legs. Mm -mm. He just like floated around on this little cloud thing. I guess that's why he's called Cloud Man. Yep. But I, I used the um, the weapon that you got from Burst Man yep. against him, mm -hmm. and that worked really well. It made it so easy. Yeah. All you had to do was like jump, jump, and time it just right, yeah. and you could pop him. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. Um, next level I have down here is Freeze Man. Okay. So uh, pretty basic ice level. Uh, this was the one where you went snowboarding on, right? Uh, is it? I don't remember snowboarding, so probably not. Uh, you're probably thinking of eight. Jump, jump, slide, Maybe. slide. Yeah, that, that's part eight. Okay. You're going to love that, Nick. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> you, ever, you ever play Battletoads? Yeah. Remember level three? Kinda. When you're on the jet bikes? Yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> what was so fun? Just, just remember that when you're playing Mega Man Eight. All right. Oh man. <laughs> Brandon kept calling me pissed off. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah, Freeze Man. He he just um. It, it was a little room, I believe, and he just was jumping back and forth, trying to hit me with his ice shit. I like when he when he posed. He was like, yeah. <laughs> um, that was tight. I put down here sent that vanilla ice motherfucker back to Canada. Oh. Uh, I put him six feet under on a block of ice. <laughs> ice beat him. <laughs> he, yeah, you're right. He was kind of cocky. Like when, when you first entered the uh, the arena with him or his, you know, his where you fight him, he wouldn't attack you until you attacked him. Did you notice no, that? No, I didn't notice yeah, that. Yeah, you just stand there and look at him, he won't do anything. Huh. <laughs> it's pretty funny. That's tight. Yeah. You guys have a jack off contest. <laughs> <laughs> Limp biscuit. You mean milky biscuit? Yeah. Um. Uh. Anybody have anything else on Freeze Man? Um. Uh, no, he's just Ice Stage. Uh, Burst Man. This level really actually bothered me because I remember go going to the water and it was all mucky and dirty. And it was so gross, and I was just like, dude, like, it, it, when you're playing through Bubble Man's level, you can at least imagine drinking the water. Yeah. Uh -huh. First Man, you can't imagine that. It's funny, the first thing I said when I, I actually said this out loud, when I went down to this stage, this is the first level I played, as soon as I saw it, though, I said, science! Because <laughs> <laughs> there's all the little beakers and Bunsen burners okay. in the background. <laughs> yeah, I didn't catch that. Um... This also has a level of the re repairing blocks. The doom, yeah. doom. Yeah. yeah, of course. That, that's that got to be in every fucking Mega Man game. Uh -huh. uh, Burst Man was actually, I think, the first uh, boss that I beat without beat, without using a... He was the first one I beat because I remember getting trapped in his bubble mm -hmm. and then just sliding back and forth and just <clears throat> shooting him. He, yeah. was, he was pretty easy. Yeah, he was. You slid back and forth in the bubble and that's how you broke it? Oh, I just used my Buster Cannon to break uh -huh. out of it. I just pushed left and right real fast. Mm. Huh. Yeah, those bubbles aren't very strong. And of course, you're trapped in a bubble floating to the top. Spikes. Big surprise. There's spikes <laughs> up there. Yeah. So, so easy way to die. I, I died a couple times because of that. Um, so you were mentioning about the, the water and how murky it was. I think at some point during the stage, because it starts off, I think it starts off murky. And you, you just sink to the bottom just like you would in any other Mega Man game. But after you beat that little, like, lobster-looking thing, do you remember what... That crab. Was it a crab? That fucking crab. I hated that crab. <laughs> after you beat that crab, you start floating. Yeah. I think that at that point, the water might change color because Mega Man's reacting differently to it. Yeah. and Which kind of threw me off. And I remember it would go up and down and you could right. uh, float in it. Mm -hmm. I think the water must have changed color. I think that was kind of their way of saying hey, this water's different from this water. Yeah. And that's why he's reacting differently to it. Yes. But, so I scalped him and sent him back to the... I mean... I, I, him? I burst his bubble. <laughs> <laughs> I bursted my nut all over him. Oh, man. I mean, these, these little quips I have, they're just ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know how to say them all. <laughs> um... Junkman's pretty easy. Junkman, that's the next one I have on my <laughs> list. Oh, Junkman was a bitch. I couldn't beat him. I couldn't beat him without the weapon yep. either. Uh, his level is nasty ass cockroaches all over the place. <laughs> Remind me of Creep Show. Yeah. The uh, tenant who has the cockroaches invade him, crawling out of his mouth. Yeah, they have the <laughs> Roach Motel. Uh, they, yeah, the, I just remember seeing the cockroaches and being like, "This is so gross." Because remember at our apartment at three seven seven. We used to have roaches, mm -hmm. and uh, of course it wasn't from my mom, because my mom was a clean freak, it was from the neighbors, and they used to have wings, and they were wow. just so gross, and we had to get them sprayed, and I was like, come on guys, this freaked me out. Yeah, he said, he turned me into junk without that weapon. Did you guys um, hear about the Elmo puppeteer? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Elmo went to... <laughs> Elmo went to Grouseland and butt fucked another victim. <laughs> <laughs> what? <Junk> man. <laughs> Off for the grouch. Okay, because he's in the garbage can. Yeah, okay. That's a good one. 
<laughs> that was the highlight of all my. <laughs> I just wanted to get that one. So there. Mega Man was Elmo. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and Jackman was a little kid. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, but Jokeman, I could not beat him without the uh, uh, the bolt weapon. Yeah. Just like the crab, I hated that fucking crab. It just, was a bitch. I I just threw my lightning at it and was like, "Come on, just fucking die!" And he wouldn't die. What is that? The one that was in the waterfall? No, uh, you go through. It's kind of like a little mini boss. Like it, it's it's a little crab. It's like. Shh, shh. Uh, I don't remember. He's a bitch. You don't remember because you probably didn't have trouble with him. He was a bitch. <laughs> it's official. So the other the other thing that I wanted to highlight is these were the first robot masters that you had to beat. You couldn't choose eight bosses. You had to choose these four. Mm-hmm. After you beat that one, you go to the robot museum, which I thought was fucking awesome. Yeah. I thought that was the best part yeah, of the whole that game. That was tight. That yeah. was tight. I have to admit that was tight. Um, Wiley broke into the ro- robot museum, was stealing some robots. You saw Snake Man in there in his 16-bit glory. Blizzard Man was in there, Pharaoh Man, Heat Man, Guts Man, Skull Man, Ring Man, and then there was a Robot Clown Fag. That's what I've written down. Oh, that guy was, yeah, I didn't like that guy. I used my Mega Buster on him. He was actually weak against the the Burst Bubble, Mm -hmm. but he's a giant robot who you have to hit him, and he's a clown robot, and his head spun around, you have to hit his head, and very small target, but not that too much of a challenge. I just like the the 16-bit robot masters highlighted there. Yeah, that was cool. Okay, this next level, Turbo Man, pissed me off so <laughs> much. I hated this fucking. I level. think everyone had uh, their ups and downs with that, or their downs with that level. The, what got me going was the stupid ass tires that pushed you back when you hit him. <laughs> Even if you like stood right under him and they bumped you, you flew all the <laughs> way back into the spikes. Uh, it's these little tires that are on a conveyor belt on the ceiling, and they keep going around and around. <laughs> And there's probably a two-second pause between each one that comes around, and there's a pit of spikes. You have to, what I did was I unleashed the rush down in the bottom of the spikes, the rush spring, and I just walked onto it and bounced off. But you still would get hit by the tire and die. So I don't know what the fuck's up with that. That level pissed me off. Yeah, as soon as I saw the, the fire, like Quick Man, like Quick Man's level uh, we talked about with the beams, well... Fire replaced it. I just shook my head. <laughs> I shook my head and I actually turned off the game. Yep. I said, I'm not dealing with this right now. I did that last night. That was the last thing I did before I went to bed last night. Like, oh, hell no. I'm not dealing with this right now. I'm going to sleep. Yeah. Uh, but it was not It was actually easier, way easier than Quick Man's level. It I was. think it was just a mental thing. I don't know if it was necessarily mental because it was still one of those things where you had to know where to go in order to avoid the uh, little... In this case, fire beams. Mm-hmm. But they, they also tempted you with a couple of rewards if uh, you went the more difficult route. There was a extra man one up, and there was also an E tank at one point as well. Mm-hmm. But if you go the easy way, like they start you off, you have to go to the right, and then if you just fall down the left side, it's pretty easy. Yeah. As long as you don't stay against the wall, because in this one, the beams are actually sticking out a little bit from the wall, so you can't just scale the wall. You have to kind of fall down between the wall and the, the nearest ledge. Yeah, and then there was that giant truck that you had to fight. Dude, I was like, I, I was like, what the fuck's up with this? I don't remember this being this hard. Stop fucking blinking. And yeah. you know, that he, whenever he blinks, you can't hit him. Is that, oh, is that what it is? Uh, the truck with the eyeball. No, no, I know, I, but I thought whenever you hit him, he blinked. No. Yeah, well, I think that's part of it. He, he would blink when you hit him, but that made it so that you couldn't like keep on. Oh, okay. Because he would blink, and then the next the next one would miss. Because I don't know how to kill him. I was shooting. I was there for five minutes, and I, <laughs> and I was shooting him, and I couldn't kill him. And then so I said out loud when I beat him, his license plate. Do you remember what it said? No. S I S I sissy. I was like. Sissy, more like pussy. <laughs> when I finally beat him, <laughs> him being able to uh, throw missiles out makes perfect sense because if you think back to Mega Man Two, how there's lava, blood lava in the underground, <laughs> okay. and, and Wiley turning into an alien. <laughs> he didn't turn into an alien. Well, I didn't think they looked like rockets, though. I thought they looked almost like those roaches that you were talking about. Yeah. They looked more like roaches, except they didn't change direction. They would just fly straight at you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I finally got to 
Turbo Man. I did not have the weapon to kill him this time, so I just killed him with my Mega Buster. Mm. Oh, I forgot. I, at this level, this level, I, I seriously, I turned it off after I, before I went to bed last <laughs> night. So when I got home from work today, I played it again. I just because I wanted to say that I beat it. I did. I eventually beat it. I don't remember. So. I don't remember what weapon I used against him. I think it was the Noise Crush, the the thing you get from Shade Man. Yeah, he's weak against that. He it, it made him pretty easy. One every time you hit him, he would uh, just turn into like a race car and charge at you, which was kind of a bitch to dodge. Yeah, it was. You, it was. You would do it at random times. You, I think you you're supposed to pay attention to like when he revs his motor and then like he'll like let out a squeal before he shoots at you or something. But it oh he always seemed to unleash that right when I jumped so I would get hit like yeah it was hard to dodge and I'm sure and remember when you were talking about the game cheating with the fans last week yeah, yeah, yeah. wait till <laughs> Mega Man Five because I remember Mega Man Five yes Mega that is where I thought the game was cheating Crystal Man. Oh, remember that the level. crystals would fall? Fuck that level. Yeah. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. No. There, there's pits and there's crystals that fall from the top. Uh-huh. It's random. And <laughs> it's, it. And when we say it's random, it's completely random. When you try to jump, a crystal will fall and hit you, you fall in the pit. And yeah, have I had a lot of fun with that level. <laughs> Well, that's how I felt about this. I mean, like we were talking, Brandon and I were talking about this earlier today. That Sam Turbo Man level, just prior to uh, dodging all those beams, there were these vertical heat, uh, vertical flames that would hit you, and they would take down heck of power. Yeah, of course they would. They were well, they wouldn't kill you instantly like the yeah. beams would, but they still took down a lot of power. They they were supposed to be on like timers or so that. You, Configured so that you would be able to figure out how to uh, how to dodge him, but it was it seemed to be very random to me. <laughs> it was it was it was hard not. Yeah, so with Turbo Man, I decked his halls. <laughs> Catch that reference. <laughs> you get, <I> got it. <laughs> it's Turbo time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jiggle all the way. Trying to take your balls, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I sent that NASCAR redneck to Dell Earnhardt's grave. Yeah, <laughs> this, you're on a redneck thing with Honey Boo Boo. Don't talk about Honey Boo Boo. I like that show. You're gonna make a lot of people upset with that Dell Earnhardt con. Oh man, I know. Yeah, they're sensitive about that, especially in the South. I don't condone that. <laughs> and then we roll in there. <laughs> what do you got next? Uh, Shade Man. Shade Man's level was hella cool. I love that level a lot. Yeah, he had, he was actually not only my favorite level, but my favorite boss. Like, it, he was my favorite boss in all the Mega Mans. I really liked him. He was noble. I wrote down that he fought like a bitch. <laughs> he, 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 felt like, he felt like a gentleman. <laughs> well, just because he bowed before the fight. And his eye twinkled. Yeah, but he would just fly around up top where you couldn't get him, <laughs> and then he'd just swoop down and suck your blood. Yeah, that, Fighting like a gentleman, he would have healed you before you started fighting. <laughs> yeah, but he, he I had fine? to get his pattern down because he... Uh, Is it fine? He uh, his, his attack... Hit me like every time oh, I yeah. went down. I never got the hang of the the cut of his jib. I never did. I was like, "What the fuck?" And I didn't even have the spring to beat him. So were you supposed to? Um, I beat him with the spring also, but I I kind of figured out his pattern. So I was like, I would just make sure to be running away from him as he mm-hmm. swooped down, and then just fire a uh, a spring at him mm-hmm. as, as he was leaving. So occasionally I would be able, I was able to dodge it. You have to dodge it because he. Not only does he suck your blood, but he actually recharges when he does that. Yeah. So it's it's double the the damage, really. Uh, um, Boss actually does that on Mega Man X too. Mm-hmm. So what I was going to ask is, if you charge up the spring, would it bounce up to get him? No. No. Because no. I remember Doctor Light saying something about charging it up and it would bounce higher, but I guess it wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. it bounces yeah. high, but not as high as. Okay. It grows too. It gets bigger. Hmm. Yeah, uh, Shade Man actually reminded me of um, the judge from Roger Rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, he, he reminded me uh, a mix between uh, the Count, the Count and from uh, Gargamel. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, the level I brought down the level reminded me of Ghosts and Goblins. That video. Yeah, game. it and did. They had the graves that came up from the ground. Mm-hmm. There's actually a secret that if you hold down B while you enter the level, it'll play Ghosts and Goblins theme music. Oh, that's tight. But you have to do it before you fight Shade Man. Mm-hmm. You can't do it after, huh? No. Huh. I never did that because I um, beat him and then I read it, but I was like, oh, that would have been cool to listen to. But I remember that Jack Lantern. I fought that Jack Lantern so many times because I was, Oh, fuck that Jack Lantern. <laughs> Go ahead, sorry. I, I was trying to get the Proto Shield and I did not know how to do it. And I kept going to that secret room. I was like, how the fuck do you do this? But the Jack Lantern, it's uh, like one of those toys where you. It's a pumpkin and then it opens up and there's a smaller pumpkin and it opens up to the weakness. Or is it just two? It's a big one, a medium one, and a small one. But you can't attack the medium one, I don't think. No, you have to hit the small one, of course. And um, I got the pattern down where I was able to kill him in like 10 seconds with the uh, lightning. Yeah, it mm. takes six hits from the lightning bolt. Yeah. And you just jump and hit him like six times and you're good. Mm. But I didn't figure that out. I just killed the, the large pumpkin. Oh, by shooting his eyes, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know you could kill it. I, I, I was doing damage to the smaller one, but I didn't know that I would have a different mm. fate if I beat him the other way. Yeah, that. Um, speaking of the Proto Shield, I fought Proto Man the first time. He killed me even though I had like three energy tanks, and I was like, I'm not getting this shield, forget it. That fucker was hard. Yeah. I had to fight him. You have to visit, in one game, you have to visit the, three, the two places where he is. In Turbo Man's level and in uh, Cloud Man's level, and then you could go fight him to get his shield. I fought him by accident. Well, I didn't know that's how you're supposed to fight him. But yeah, Proto Man, I used up all my E tanks on him and S tank to beat him. He has so much life. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But the Proto Shield blocks pretty much anything, any projectile. Hmm. And you could actually shoot while you have it too. It's pretty cool. Uh, Spring Man. Or did you have something to say about Shade Man? Um, uh, I respected the guy a lot. <laughs> there was um one thing about the level. There were these crows that were like perched on these pillars. Dude. Which I, I thought was interesting because the pillars were actually in the foreground. So like you could, it would appear that you were walking through them basically. Yeah. But you could still attack the... The, the crows or the ravens on an even plane, which doesn't make uh, physical sense to me. <laughs> but I thought that was kind of interesting, that how they kind of added in different dimensions. Like a, there was a foreground and then there was a background. Those crows that held a life. Yeah, too. they did. They had, uh, they did. usually a large amount of life. And they, weren't, they didn't do much. They just shot a little pellet at you yeah. every like five seconds or so. Yeah. Um... Spring Man, yep, big fucking surprise. Everything in that level was a spring. <laughs> <laughs> Every single thing, even the enemies were springs. Springs were all over that. Even at the start of the level, there's springs. I c- I couldn't believe it. I didn't find this one to be nearly as difficult as the. I don't remember what the the other spring type Nightman. was. Is it Nightman? Oh Is wait, all the springs in it. Uh, Nightman had springs and Plantman had springs. Okay. That doesn't make sense, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I didn't find the level to be difficult, as or at least as difficult no. as those levels. I thought the level was pretty straightforward, unless I missed all the secret stuff that you guys always find. No, no I didn't get all the secret stuff. <laughs> uh, apparently, after I beat the game, you could get other secret stuff by using the rush search in certain spots, and he pulls up items for you. I was like, how are you supposed to know that? Like, you get... The power arm, I bought that from the store because I didn't know you could rush search it. And you spent $800 on that thing? And there was um, <laughs> the exit. Yeah. I didn't know you could search for that. You could search for everything that you could buy at the shop. That's but... stupid. Because <laughs> how are you supposed to know where it's at? That's like Zelda, like bombing random exactly. holes. <laughs> but everyone knows that just because it's everyone knows it. Yeah. No one knows this, except for maybe Brad, I guess. It, it, it would have been heck of cool if the search was unlimited but it yeah wasn't. it wasn't and so uh, the thing that bothered me about the search also is that it took him like 20 seconds <laughs> to dig anything up yeah and and he'd like dig up a game boy a green <laughs> robot toy. i saw him dig up a top hat one time <laughs> i was like dude what the fuck are you doing <laughs> stupid dog if it was a cat 
<laughs> yeah, they got some shit, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when we were playing Mega Man 3, and uh, Logan was talking about the dogs on Woodman's level, <laughs> and then uh, I got to the cat on Topman's level, and you were like, yeah, kill that cat. <laughs> 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 the one that hacked up freaking was it was it like yarn balls or something yeah, like that and it threw fleas at you <laughs> <laughs> that's right but um, another funny moment with my kids is I was uh, using rush search and he dug up like a bolt that was like huge it was like a mega bolt right. and Logan was like wow <laughs> all excited over the bolt <laughs> So that, I thought that was funny. I actually found that one because I, I saw that there was like an X on the yep. ground, so I figured I'd go ahead and search there, and there, that's where I found that one. Was board. that in Spring Man's Little? It was in Spring Man's Little, yeah. Uh, the last person I think here is Flash Man, yep. which was a hella cool concept. It was a Wolverine lookalike, but he, he was hard as fuck for me. He would just get throw paint on you, get all angry, and you'd have to throw your fire wheel out Did you have any sort of uh, quip for a spring man defeating it? I, I have written down <laughs> enter joke here. I never thought of one. <laughs> uh, I put, I turned him into a slinky and sent him down the stairway to hell. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been pretty cool. <laughs> I don't think anything could beat your time. Oh, yeah. I liked his main attack. It was like a, a reverse pile drive. Did you guys fall victim to Spring Man's attack at all? No. Uh -uh. Yeah, when he grabs you and he, slams, yeah, you, he slams yeah. you up in the ceiling, it's kind of cool. But that's all I pretty much written down. Right now. So you want to go into Wiley's castle? Uh, Slash Man. Yeah. Uh, I pushed his ass and sold him to the highest bidder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I just want to say a little thing about this level. Uh, there were a couple of things in here that reminded me of Super Mario Brothers 2. Like the the logs that fell down that water. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That part. I hated that part. It, it took a few tries, huh? And there was also, um, you rode ostriches at one point, which was also like yeah. Super Mario Brothers 2. I thought that was kind of interesting. I didn't get why Slash Man had dinosaurs in his level. <laughs> <laughs> there was like a T-Rex that you ran from, and there was um, like a little Ankylosaurus type thing. In there as well. Yeah, and it, I think even at the start of the level, there was like a electric fence, like it was like a Jurassic Park. It was. Yeah. Why, why is Slash Man in Jurassic Park? I don't. I didn't get that. Yeah, that's what I have written down. Yeah. Slash Man, Jurassic Park, first thing. <laughs> and then the T Rex. I was like, is that a dragon? That's what I, I was so scared. <laughs> <laughs> I was like looking at it, and then it started running out to me. I was like, oh shit, this is gonna be Dragon from Mega Man Two. <laughs> and then they, even they have those little two platforms yep. that you could stand on, but. In this case, you can fall to the ground. It wouldn't hurt you. That's why it wasn't nearly as bad. It was a bitch compared to that dragon. Did you ever hit him with the ice weapon? The dragon? No. Slash man. No. He freezes and slides uh, across the floor. Yeah. I, I Takes a that. heck of life. No way. Yep. That sucks. That would have helped me out in Wiley's castle. Helped me out. So uh, we have in Wiley's castle uh, storm in that place. Uh, I didn't write the first boss down because I, I don't think I remembered it. Did you write him down? I stopped. Well, I, oh. This is about where I stopped, yeah. actually. I, after I be, finally beat Turbo Man's level, you start with Wiley's Castle. I got to base or whatever, Forte yeah. or whatever his name is, and I actually died there, and I was like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> I, got, I got to Wiley's Castle. I can do the rest later. The first boss is really hard. Super Guts Man. Super Gut Man. Not that hard. I, I found it to be very hard. Oh. Um, with the Super Guts Man, I just used the Slash Claw on him, and I just hit him and ran away. Oh. Um, Baze is actually really susceptible to the um, rush power, the arm cannon. Hmm. On the second form? On both of them. Oh, on both of them? I used it on the second form. I don't have the... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't acquire that ability. Uh, if, did you get the rush suit or no? Were you nah. or USH? If you get it, he's weak against that. Um, the next level I have is a turtle. Remember the little turtle that rocket? Oh started? yeah, that, he was hard. He oh was, no, no, he was easy. Yeah. He was real easy. He, yeah, pretty easy. Nothing. I don't want to spend too much time on him. But the level three one was a flying Oni machine. 
Oh, that one was easy, real easy for me. Yeah, I I remember that he was weak against a slash claw. He take is he? He, he, he take him down fast with the slash claw. Huh. But uh, otherwise, it's the echo, the bat echo. That's what I use on him. And then level four was the gauntlet, right? No, uh, huh? What was level four the gauntlet? Yeah. Wait, second power suit. Yeah, because there was a turtle, and then the oni, and then and then there was the boss gauntlet, and then Wily. Wily gave me the hardest time, like ever. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Wily was the hardest form for me. Uh, this was the hardest form of Wily ever. It was like they made him super hard on purpose. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that really pissed me off about Doctor Wily is his form was his second form was super hard. Yeah, it was. Um, it, it's like it. I actually got his pattern down where I could kill him with one E tank reserve, and at that point I was like, I tried it the night before, didn't make it. Went stocked up on E tanks, had to fight through the whole castle again. Tried it the next night, wasted all my freaking bolts, bought all the E tanks up again, couldn't beat it. Then the third night I finally beat him, and at that point, um, I w I actually did. I pulled a Logan and I was up standing up. Like jumping <laughs> as I fought, as I fought him, and it was just like, "Are you fucking serious? This guy's this hard?" Yeah, he's really hard. He shoots out four colored balls that, well, all four balls will go to you to, in one direction, and then if you dodge it, they'll go over to you again. If the blue ball hits you, you turn into ice. If the red ball hits you, you get set on fire like Turbo Man, like flaming, and then the electric one just hurts you, and it's just like, "Are you serious?" But I finally took him down. I used the um, ice cracker on him. That's what I did. I used the frost, and then I switched to the um, to the uh, spring to the spring when he was low enough to take away extra damage, and I'd switch back to the frost when he was high above. The, the frost, I don't know if you noticed, but you could control the direction it goes. You uh, could no, put it down. Yeah. I didn't know that either until I started fighting Doctor Wiley and psh, bitch. <laughs> That's discouraging. Mm -hmm. So we're on our top five list. Yep. So, <laughs> top five NES games. I will go first. Number five. I meaning Brandon. Yes, Brandon going first. We sound similar. You need to <laughs> keep. I, I try to change my voice sometimes. Like I'll do it real low sometimes, <laughs> or sometimes I'll try to do it loud, just so we could have different voice. Because if if we actually call call our mom sometimes, and we'll be talking to her on the phone, and then I'll be like, and she's a talker. She'll be talking your ear off, and then I'll be like, dude, it's your turn. I'll throw Brandon in the phone. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, 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 uh -huh, uh -huh. What? I told you that bitch was crazy. <laughs> and we'll just be talking, and then he'll listen for 20 minutes. He's like, dude, here, my ear's hurting. And our mom won't know. <laughs> so we sound identical on the phone. Uh, number five on my list, Brandon's list, is Ghost and Goblins for the Nintendo. Well, I guess they're all for Nintendo. Uh, made by Capcom. Cap yep. Uh, fun game. Because that the, uh, Mega Man was made yeah. by Capcom in the Shade Man's level. In this game, you play as Arthur, uh, trying to save Guinevere from the Devil Lucifer. Uh, yeah. So even though it was really hard, it was still fun. The dark theme of you know the zombies and different monsters you fight is really cool. What I thought was really interesting about that game is in the instruction booklet. They said the first boss was called a unicorn. Oh Remember yeah, they that? did. And it was like this big ogre, white ogre thing <laughs> with a horn. With the horn, and it's supposed to be unicorn. There's no horse. It was a big white this ogre. This is not a unicorn. <laughs> it was not a unicorn, dude. I'm gonna make a shirt that has that ogre, and it's gonna say, "This is not a unicorn," <laughs> or "This is a real unicorn." This is oh, brony okay. for life. Okay. You know the My Little Pony people games. Yeah. But I, I always thought that was odd. It was a super hard game. I remember playing, getting to level two where they had those tough man guys with yeah. the tattoos. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck is this? It's so hard. Yeah. Water coming down at you, killing you. I played that game on the arcade when I went to Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Got a high score. Got to the boss of level two in three men. Oh, cool. Yeah. Pretty proud of myself. I'm glad you put your initials. BB. BLB. Yeah. So you never actually beat it, did you? No. Yeah. Never. Because you have to beat that game twice in order to beat it. Yeah. 
stupid. You haven't heard about that? Mm-mm. Once you beat the game, they say, you are not strong enough to beat Lucifer. You have to go back and get the bracelet. Jesus. You go all the way back to level one, and you have to get the, the this power called the bracelet. That and, happened on part one, too? It, wow. Because I remember that happening on Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Yeah. And you have to play throughout the whole game again. That's crazy. Yeah. That's... Yeah, I, I I think I played that game a few times in my youth, but I I don't even remember getting to these unicorn boss. They're so fucking hard. I like the ghosts are like. <laughs> that's you know, that's gonna tight. Yeah, they're like flying condoms. <laughs> Doesn't he lose his armor at some point? Oh yeah. yeah. If you get hit, you strip down to your boxers, <laughs> and then if you get hit again, you turn into a skeleton and die. Nice. So two hits, you're dead. That's awesome. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and go. Uh, my number five was my number one sports game, Baseball Stars. Um, talked about it a lot in previous podcasts. Um, I mentioned that it was the first baseball game, or I, I believe it's probably the first sports game to have battery backup, meaning that you can save information on there. Um, I mentioned that uh, the gameplay was very smooth. Uh, Particularly on defense, you could slide, you could jump, you can even scale walls to catch balls. Um, it was easy to judge, you know, where balls were going, so that you could catch, you could probably position your defensive players to catch them on the fly. Um, to tag on to the the fact that you could save information, you could actually create your own team, make your own players, draft players, uh, develop players. Very very cool game, and uh, I'm bummed that Brad can't get that one that I got him to, to play yet. I hope that he can get it going at some point. I will. I'll, I'll, I'll get it eventually. Nice. <clears throat> uh, my number five list game on my list is going to be Double Dragon. Mm-hmm. Uh, in our first podcast, I said Double Dragon 2 was my one of my favorite du- uh, double NES games. Double Dragon 1 was, uh, was the first Double Dragon or Nintendo game I got to play and you know, it's just very simple game, fun to play, and I remember the twins, Juan and Tony, used to be like, we were six and they were seven. They're like, six-year-olds beat a Bobo by throwing him off the conveyor belt. Only seven-year-olds could beat him for real and make him blink. I remember when the enemy died, they blinked. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I remember we did it when we were at their house, and they were like, you're not, you're still not seven. I was like, whatever. But that was my number five. Asses. Uh, my number four, uh, probably the game for Nintendo that has the best music in my opinion, Mega Man 2. I was debating between Mega Man 2 and 3, because we played 3 a lot, but Mega Man 2, the music just put it over its uh, successor. Um, talked about this game a lot, not much more to say about it, uh, just that uh, there's this band called The Advantage. Hmm. Uh, off of the NES Advantage and they have, have some pretty kick-ass Mega Man 2 music that comes on my Pandora every so often they have like all the stages like uh, Flash Man and Metal Man hmm. uh, Bubble Man yeah Bubble Man's cool they Air have, Man. Yeah, they I'm have, just guessing I'm just guessing they, <laughs> they, they actually have one song that does the stage select the, um, where it shows the bosses and they play a little bit of each boss music, and it's really cool. That's cool. I, you told me about them about a month ago now, and I, I did check them out. I like them a lot. Yeah, they, they're they're very indie sounding. Like their 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 instruments are very minimalist. Like it's just a guy playing a uh, undistorted electric guitar, and a guy with a very simple drum kit, like maybe a. A snare, a crash, uh, maybe a hi hat, maybe a couple toms and a little kick drum. They might not even have a bass player in the band. I maybe not. I don't hear much bass in it, but it's very, very indie sounding, uh, very raw sounding. It's, it's it's cool though. I'm I'm more into the metal type music, but that, it's it's cool to listen to. Yeah, they they do Metroid and they do a lot of old school uh, Nintendo songs. It's awesome. Yeah. You know the, the advantage. Mm-hmm. Okay. Would you read my number four, please? <laughs> Mega Man 2. <laughs> <laughs> the game in the series where I fell in love. Did you uh, want to read I, that? I, okay. I, 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 I just thought it was funny that we chose the same number four. Yeah. 
Um, so we've obviously talked about this game a <laughs> lot. Uh, this this is the game that established the eight boss structure for Mega Man. So you got to give it some props there. As Brandon said, all, tons of good music in this game. Um, this game also introduced the the energy tanks. It also introduced the the password system, which was another thing that I hated about Mega Man Seven is that they did away with the password yeah. system. They have a lot of these numbers with pictures of characters from Mega Man, which just totally pissed me off. And in this, in the original Mega Man Two password system, it was just a, a grid with random red dots in in, in places, and that's how you would. Uh, it didn't have a battery backup, so you couldn't save your game. You'd have to write down your password. It was just kind of it was something you kind of looked forward to as a kid, but now you have to write down a bunch of numbers. It's just not nearly as fun. That's all I had to say about Mega Man 2. It, there's a um, every time I would see that that password screen on Mega Man 7, I would be like, "Fuck you, Eddie." <laughs> <laughs> Flip top. I hated that robot. Yeah. Um, my number four was River City Ransom. Yep, that game's tight. Because it was the first game that you actually you could do co-op on it. You actually got your uh, money. You 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 earn money and coins. And you go to shops and buy like upgrades like sandals, dragon sandals, and dragon kicks, and uh, all these different equipment. You could take a, a hot sauna and yep. you're naked in there. I remember <laughs> that. And dude had a towel on. I was like, dude, why are they showing this? But then little that did I know Japanese people are weird over there at that time. And um, all time. <laughs> no, like at that time when I was a kid, I didn't realize that is what I meant to say. But um, I remember that. Like you'd get hit and I'd say like Bort or Gort or something. Barf. Or barf. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you fought people's names like Moose and <laughs> you got to pick up environmental objects like tires and crowbars and basically you're two guys running around on the turf trying to find uh, girlfriends again. I don't know what it is about girls right. being abducted but huh? uh, even in Skater Die 2 yeah. <laughs> girl gets abducted you have to go find her. But um, that game was was really cool, and uh, just playing it two players and fighting all the bosses. You, it's free realm, so you go anywhere. You could even go to a, a place where you're not strong enough and go gain levels there. So it's a cool game. Yep. My number three was a Nightmare on Elm Street. That game is so fun. Have you played it? I think I tried to play it. I didn't get into it. Uh, in this game, uh, you. Uh, it's I believe it's one of the games where you could play it up to four players. Four players. Yeah. Uh, if you had the what what was it the adapter? I don't know what it was called. I found I found that at the Goodwill, but it didn't have all the pieces. Mm -hmm. You have an adapter port that could um, plug in four controllers, and you get to of course you're on a mission to find Freddy's bones and kill him, uh, but this game made me scared because once you heard that Freddy music start playing <laughs> dude that, that that game gave me nightmares the yeah. first night I played it gave me a nightmare yeah and and it was a, a nightmare of a nightmare on the street <laughs> <laughs> like video game yeah <laughs> uh, it, it, basically you have a sleep bar and if you don't uh, you know, drink coffee or listen to the radio yeah, get a loud boom box you start falling asleep and once you get to like your last couple bars of your sleep bar the you know the one two do 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 it sounded weird in midi form but it was scary still mm -hmm. and was like, yeah because you knew that when you when that got to the end of the song freddy was coming freddy was coming and it actually said that freddy is coming <laughs> <laughs> and i remember get, first time getting to that screen i paused the game <laughs> Because <laughs> at this time, me and Brandon watched the first three Nightmare on Streets, and we were like, Freddy's coming to our house and he's going to kill us. <laughs> I believe this is the same night where we used to stay up late and watch TV shows. They w there was a Freddy hotline. You could call the 1 800 yep. number and talk to Freddy. And it was a 900 number. Those ones are money. And yeah, it was 900 number. And our mom threatened to call Freddy and tell him to come oh, over to our house. Yeah. And then we had the game, and she pro that was probably the night she scratched her fingernails on the wall, too. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it scared us. 
<laughs> you remember that night when we stayed up watching Indiana, Indiana Jones? Jones? Yeah. I for some reason I couldn't go to sleep that night. We, uh, Temple of Doom was on, and I we couldn't go to sleep. And no. I was like, it was like eleven o'clock at night, and I was getting so depressed that I couldn't fall asleep. I was feeling the same way. And I was like, I have to go to sleep so I can wake up and go to school. And it was so late, I was scared and depressed, and Brad fell asleep. And I said, are you asleep? He was like, I was asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it was, but um, just that feeling of not being able to fall asleep when you had to just scared me for some reason. That, that's so weird because I felt the same way. You know, I get depressed when I'm awake and the sun comes up. Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah, like if I don't go to sleep, like when you, we used to stay at, or we used to stay up all night playing games, mm -hmm. and I'd go home and the sun was coming up, I'd get depressed. I fucking love that. <laughs> that's weird. Yeah. I think that's awesome. I don't know. It's just, and uh, sometimes when I used to drive around with uh, my friend Josh and the sun would be coming up, I'd like, you have to go home now so I could go home and go to sleep before the sun completely rises. <laughs> Oh okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, but back to not running on the street. Yeah, when you fought Freddy, um, it, when you did fall asleep, you got to be pick one of the powers, like the Wizard Master, the Ninja, the Gymnast, the Gymnast, the Track and Field that was through javelins. <clears throat> and yes, you know, went to house to house fighting Freddy's uh, parts. You know, his hand or his head. It was it was cool. The Freddy goes from yeah. uh, part one with the sheep. Yeah. It was, yeah, that, that game was scary as hell, gave me nightmares, and uh, it is a rare game. Um, I had two copies, as I said earlier in the, in the earlier podcast, and I sold one to Fair Game for like five bucks that didn't work. <laughs> they didn't test it? No. Sucker. <laughs> uh, my number three was the original Final Fantasy. This is the game that made me a lifelong RPG gamer. Um... This game in particular I like because it gave you the opportunity to create your own party. Right at the beginning of the game they allowed you to choose from a black mage, a white mage, a red mage, a thief, a fighter, and... Red mage? I had mentioned red mage. Oh. I thought there was one more though. Is it a, th a thief, a fighter, a, a, a thief kung turns fu. into a ninja, doesn't it? There's a kung fu guy, black belt? Maybe a black belt. Maybe that's what it is. What does a thief turn into? A thief does turn into a ninja. I have that written down, mm -hmm. actually. Anyway. Uh, is, so, there's a monk on there, isn't there? No. Wouldn't that be a white There's the guy with the, the, like the, uh, the blue suit mm -hmm. with the headband. Hmm. I don't remember that. Well, anyway, I wrote down my, my favorite party was a black mage, a white mage, a fighter, and a thief. And the only reason I like the thief is because they did promote to a ninja. Um... Kind of a cool game, uh, as far as I know. At least it, for me, it was definitely the, the first game that would allow you to kind of explore the whole world map wherever and whenever you wanted to. You weren't restricted on going from here to here to here to here. You could, you could do whatever you wanted at any time. Of course, you'd probably get your ass beat if you yeah. went to certain places and you didn't have enough experience. But Those ogres? Oh, man. Those like eight, 20 hits or whatever, eight <laughs> hits? Those ogres will get you for sure. Um, as far as I know, it was also the first game, again, at least for me, it definitely was the first game where fight scenes would just happen randomly right. as you were traveling across the world map. I like that concept as well. You never know when you're going to run into a fight. You can go two minutes without running into a fight, or you can go two seconds until you run into your next fight. It's all, it's all random. Um, yeah, it was just... Like probably the game that changed changed my whole perspective on video games really. Do you remember that cave? There was a cave where each time you walked there was a like a battle with some heck of strong demon. I don't know if it was ogres or what, but every step you would take you'd have to fight him. It's been such a long time since I played the game. I don't remember all the details of the game. Is that was an Ultima? Was it Ultima? No, no that was a Final Fantasy. There's a special cave uh -huh. that did that. I do know that the the Black Mages, the band that uh, Nobuo Uematsu plays with, who wrote all of the uh, Final Fantasy music, he they do a cover of a song called Matoya's Cave, which is from uh, the original Final sure. Fantasy. I love that mm. song or piece of music, if you prefer. 
Maybe it's Matorius Cave. I doubt that it is, though. Matorius mm -hmm. Cave is something else. I actually know what Matorius Cave is. So that was all that I had to say about Final Fantasy. It's my number three. All right. My number three is actually the flip side to that. It's going to be Dragon Warrior. <laughs> oh, yeah. I played that before I played Final Fantasy, and I thought it was uh, real cool. I think that was one of the games uh, we got when we graduated eighth grade, came out of the Yep. Uh, buy one NES game for 5 or $10, and we chose that one. And I remember the first level, you, you start fighting the slimes, and we always would save up enough money to buy the sword instead of the club, even though... The club cost sixty, I believe, and the sword cost two seventy. We always saved up for mm -hmm. the sword first, gain levels, and then we go out fight waverns and golems and star waverns and metal slimes. And gold golems, gold Those golems, golems. bitches, werewolves, the werewolves. Uh, the, that game. The another part I liked about it is we were going to the ghost town, and there's just swamps and mm -hmm. you know monsters, and you, you hit the right spot before you find. Uh, I think it's Eric's armor. And you fight that knight, <clears throat> which is hecka strong. Mm -hmm. And you fight. He's like by the beginning of the game, so you gotta level up to beat him. But I remember we got up to the dragon lord, the last boss, but we never beat him. Yeah, that guy was rough. And it once we got to a high level, it took like million, not millions, but a lot of experience points to even gain another level. Like probably like thirty thousand experience points, and you would only get like <coughs> one fifty. So you guys never beat that game? No. Uh -uh. I was just going to say, I want, I've always wanted to go back and play that game, but not if it's going to be like that. <laughs> <laughs> and remember the red dragon, or the green dragon that uh, is holding the princess captive? Yeah. You think that's a dragon lord, but it's you not. You think that's the end of the game. Uh, Gwendolyn, her name is, yeah. you get Gwendolyn's love after you beat that dragon. But yeah, you find the dragon in the deep dark dungeon, beat him. Not the end of the game. That's only like the beginning. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Which sets up the freaking mood for Dragon Quest Seven. <laughs> I played Dragon Quest Seven for probably two hundred and fifty hours, and I wasn't even like three quarters of the way through to it. Yeah. I stopped playing that game. That's the first <laughs> game I actually stopped playing because it was just way too long. I'm not into that. I, I love RPGs, but I'm not into that. It's got to be realistic. <laughs> Uh, speaking of games that go on forever, I finally beat Bayonetta last weekend. You go on forever? <laughs> yeah. For How did me, you like it? Uh, I didn't like it. I, I didn't like it as much as you did. Uh, mainly because I don't like that style of gameplay, the Devil May Cry type gameplay. Uh, yeah. And second, I don't like how you have to find the secret Alfheim levels or whatever. I don't have the patience to go back and look for all that, even though I do have patience to play put 160 hours into Fallout 3. Oh, wow, Pokemon. Yeah. You sit there and breed like 10,000 Pokemon a day, try to get a shiny. I got Diamond up to 999 nine hours and 99 minutes or 59 minutes and the, the clock stopped. <laughs> but yeah, Bayonetta I just can't get into. I, I beat it though. Jubileus was, uh, I think she kept killing me with that black hole. Yeah. But um, after I, you know, got it down, it was pretty easy. Yeah. I didn't even want to attempt hard mode or infinite climax. I didn't get platinum? No. Oh. What's infinite climax? I don't remember. Yeah, okay. Um, but Dragon Warrior, that's, that was my number three. My number two was Double Dragon. Uh, just um, a lot of good memories with that game. Uh, safe. Uh, <laughs> Getting all seven hearts in like the first couple levels just by you know punching the enemy, let him recover, punching the enemy, let him recover, do that over and over again until like we got the hair pull in the first level, then up to like the elbow in the second level. Yeah, you you punch them until the enemies open their mouths, like because you know one more hit they're gonna drop, but you let them live, and you just keep spamming that. Uh, punching gives you more, but then you could just the kick is more safer because it's a long range. Kick him twice, then move up. Kick him twice, move down. Yeah, yeah. My number two is Super Mario Brothers Three. Hmm. Made its legendary debut on the, the, wizard. <laughs> the wizard. Got always got to mention the wizard in the, on this podcast, quoting to Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> only been mentioned like two or three times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, I just wrote down a few notes. I'm just going over them real quick. Um, 
So in the first couple of Mario Brothers games, there was always uh, eight worlds. Did Mario Brothers 2 have eight worlds, or did it have seven? I want to say it had seven. 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 Well, the first one definitely had eight, and, and Mario Brothers 3 it kind of took that eight-world idea and it just blew it up. So it was, each world had its own theme, and it, it it made every level unique. It was an awesome idea, totally innovative for, uh, for its time. Um, uh, also, when you're choosing your levels, kind of along the same lines as the Final Fantasy games, as you beat levels, more levels open up, but you don't necessarily have to go from one le- level 1 to level 2. You can go from level 1, maybe sometimes you can go to level 3, or maybe there's like a bonus game that you can play, like a, a card matching game, or just go into a little mushroom house where you could get bonuses as well. I appreciated that. It made it kind of changed it up from the, the the traditional video game that you play, at least for that time. Um, it also introduced different varieties of Mario, especially Mario Brothers Two. There was only one Mario, but we all know that's not really a Mario Brothers game anyway. But in Mario Brothers One, it was there was just the big Mario, the Super Mario, I guess, and the uh, the firepower Mario. Once you got got the fire flower. This this game introduced like a raccoon Mario that could fly. He had the Tanuki suit where he could uh, turn into like a, a statue. He had the frog suit where he could swim around in the uh, in the water. He also had like a, a hammer suit where he could turn into a hammer brother. Um, there was even a level or two where he could like get in this boot and jump around in it so he could uh, jump over spikes and that was the, tight. Those I little like that. pincher things. That was all five two. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it also introduced uh, the underlings to Bowser. He had his little Koopalings, and each one I th- I think was named after. Do you know what they were named after? I want to say the one that I liked particularly was uh, Ludwig von uh, Bowser, <laughs> or Ludwig von Koopa. Excuse me. I thought they were they were named after like musical references, but maybe it was just that one. Because they about Wendy. Or Cindy, Wendy, yeah, and then Roy, Mort, Martin. Maybe they, weren't, maybe they weren't named after anything. The one that I liked was Ludwig. Yeah, Mama. he was tight. He yeah. had tight hair. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I believe Princess Peach is the mother to all of them. Oh wow, they're pretty rough. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't even considered that. And they're they're septuplets too. <laughs> no, oh. it's every time she's been kidnapped. <laughs> she, she's pro-life. <laughs> pro-life for life. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, I almost put that game on my list, but I remember the first day we got, we rented it from Big G. I had the flu, and I remember playing it and falling asleep on my stomach with it. First time I fell asleep playing a video game. Well, it definitely wasn't the last, but I remember being sick, sick as a dog playing that game. <laughs> Got the warp whistle from the wizard. Uh, the, you know, warping to the different levels. We did not know where to find the last warp whistle, which was in level two. We had to hammer the side of the level to go find the third one. But uh, the, uh, the giant land that was awesome. Uh-huh. Uh, Skyland. They even put in little uh, parts where if you collected enough coins on the levels that automatically moved you get like ghost ships or whatever or, or is it a pee wing is that what you're talking yeah, about yeah but you also there's a, like a, go, a ghost white house or something or a ghost ship oh that's right and it would like float around the yeah. level and certain times you wouldn't be able to access it because it would be behind like a, yeah. a barrier or something like that yeah but, but, uh, that game was cool my favorite level as a kid was the the giant world level four yeah that's the one i always liked too. and then when i Played it when I was older. My favorite level was Pipe World because it had it was real challenging. I really like Pipe World. I like Pipe World. It was cool. Level seven. Seven, yeah. I'm trying to remember what the different ones were. I think the first one was just regular. The second one I think was the desert. desert. The third one water. might have been the water. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the fourth one was the giant fire. It was like in the clouds. What ice. seven is? Oh, six is ice. Okay. Ice and then pipes and then eight is just hell. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hated the ice level. It sucked. I hated the last level. I was like, that you, you, I always stocked up P wings for that last level. Of course. <laughs> and because of those airships. Oh, man. When you beat the game, you get like 30 P wings, don't you? And then you can play the game over yeah. again. Yeah. <laughs> Made the game heck of easier. And I remember <laughs> every level that showcased the leaf. 
you could fly in. You were able to like fly and find a secret. There's a secret up in the cloud somewhere. What do you mean let's showcase the leaf? What we're at a leaf in the level. Any level where you get the bigness and then you get the leaf. Oh okay. Had there was a secret up in the cloud somewhere. Oh okay. So my number two is gonna have to be Friday the thirteenth. That was on my honorable mentions. That's a completely awesome game. That I think that was the first game that actually scared us. Yeah. Uh, we were in kindergarten playing it and all of a sudden you're walking in the cabin searching in first person mode and you're zoom and Jason would pop out and freak you the hell out. Yeah. <laughs> and he'd have an axe or you know, he sometimes he'd just have his fist and he'd choke you to death. He'd just boom <laughs> hit you. But you what do you have a rock? To yeah. start off with, yeah, you start off with a rock. How does this kill Jason with a rock? It's like ten hits takes away a, a little bar of its health, um, and you first you get the rock, then the daggers, then the torch, pitchfork. But once you beat the first couple levels and you get that pitchfork, he's just a piece of cake. Yeah, I remember we game genie the shit out of that game. That game is so hard. Yeah, and when you die, it just says you are dead. <laughs> Instead of game over, or something, <laughs> you are dead. And then I, I got, I used to get scared because uh, I play as Mark and Chrissy. I think they were the fastest and the fastest jumpers. Yeah. And you hear, doo -doo, and you the campers would be in trouble. Yeah. And I'd be like, who, who, which cabin is he at? Oh, he's he's at George's cabin. George could die. <laughs> he's the one that used to walk hecka slow yeah. and jump hecka low, and uh, like he could die. And then the, he'd go in the lake and kill the like go, go attack the little campers, and that freaked me out because they're like little kids in there. <laughs> and Jason's killing them, and he would come in the water. He would swim through the water like a fast and hit you. That game was freaky. And I remember in my first grade class with Salad in the one where I got the shadow hamster. I painted a picture of the different Jasons. <laughs> That's like a time. And she was like, "What is this?" I was like. This is Jason with the axe. This is Jason with the machete. <laughs> this is Jason with the... <laughs> and she was like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> they like, what the fuck is this kid doing? <laughs> if that was in current times, they would have called the psychiatrist on you. <laughs> Probably. But that, that was my number two game. Awesome game. Uh, my number one was Zelda II, The Adventures of Link. <laughs> it was. I, I, I was going to put Zelda one, but I had way more fun with Zelda 2 because it's free roaming uh, you get different power ups as you do in part 1 but these are different from the ones in part 1 you get like a hammer you get a you do get a power glove and uh, it's more RPG-ish than the first one you get to talk to townsfolk uh, you go to death mountain you find iron knuckle it is a great game Worth it. remember they had the uh, captain N cartoon that showcased him teaming up with Link and they yeah. went and fought Horsehead. Yeah, that was tight. Yeah. So that was my, my game. We talked about it already, but um, the palaces, there's eight palaces and uh, it's just fun to explore Hyrule. And, and then we would always go get the item, gain levels, and not fight the boss, right? We, and, we would get Junk Spell. We would uh, go through the dark and get um, we would I think we'd beat level we just get the candle from level one. Yeah. And then we go back and get the glove, and we get all the items in the levels, but not beat the bosses, because once you beat the boss, it's an automatic level up. Yeah. And so uh, I think we beat them out of order. I want to say we beat level two first before level one, but it was still fun. And the Death Mountain, that where you have to find the hammer, that yeah. maze was horrific. Yeah, yeah. Those guys that threw the red dog face looking guys that threw the the hatchets at you. Yeah. Those guys are such a pain in the ass. Yep. Even if you get down thrust and go back and try, I don't think you, you can get down thrust yet because you need the rock to be, break the boulder to go to that town. So down thrust is enough of the third town where you fight Iron Knuckle in the cemetery. Yeah. Cool game though. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love that game, but I don't see how it holds a flame to let the original Legend of Zelda. But, I mean, you guys talked about that in a previous podcast, about how there's a lot of things that could have made Legend of Zelda 2 a lot better. Yeah, um, that was mainly Brad. I <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. could have been a lot better, though. I mean, I, oh, yeah, I, I love the game. <laughs> the, the original Legend of Zelda 
kind of kind of was free roaming. I yeah, mean, you could play the levels out of order if you wanted to, and you would talk to you would go into the, the little caves, and there would be people who would direct you in t- as to what you were supposed to do, and there were like the the fortune tellers that would direct you and gambling. Yeah, there was gambling. You didn't get to talk to a bat though. <laughs> Okay, good point. <laughs> or or a midget. <laughs> <laughs> or error. I am error. Or a little blob. Yeah. <laughs> what was it when you have to talk to it like 20 times? Was it the bat? Yeah. <laughs> Before it would say anything, you had yeah. to talk to it 20 times? And he's like, get out of here or something. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I like Zelda 2 a lot, but my number one was the, the original Legend of Zelda. Um, so my number one game is Nightmare on the Street, mm-hmm. only because it gave me nightmares and it freaked me out. And uh, Zelda, I figured one of you guys would put it on there, even though it's very high on my list. Nightmare on the Street just, I like being scared, not when I was a kid, but I was so freaked out by that game, and I think that game has the most memories tied to it because they freak me out. And it's two player and there was like the graveyard level and the different houses and it was, it was spooky. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just, I was never into horror movies and I wasn't into those games either. You had a few of the Evil Dead questions, right? I probably guessed on them. <laughs> I, I, the, the car question was debatable. I think he slayed many monsters with that, with that car. <laughs> Didn't it have like a huge like fan on the front of it that it was? It was like a propeller, yeah. That he mowed down demons with the de- uh, deadites. It's a fucking weapon right there. That's a steed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go through it. I don't do the weight challenge. I've actually been doing extremely well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all the live long day. Uh, uh, my wife and I have been eating really well and I've been going to the gym five six times a week um, just mixing it up with cardio one day I'll do cardio one day I'll do my weights I'm not I'm not doing weights and cardio the same day because I just get burnt out and not wanting to go yep so um, a few weeks ago before we started eating right and which no, you called me and was like we're eating right right like, you're eating white rice all day? What? Uh, no, we're eating right, right. I mean, you're on the phone to us, muffled. I don't know what the hell you're saying. And like, no, right, right. And I'm like, what, what's right, right? And like, it's no cheating. I was like, I wouldn't call it that. I'd just say I'm eating good. So, um, started, uh, eating right. Uh, Brad had told me about the smothered burrito which I saw the commercials on for Taco Bell yeah I think I just left your house what, what do we do was that you helped me with the dump and you dropped me off and Karen was with us right and you have a Taco Bell across the street and I saw a smothered burrito and I like called you instantly but you didn't pick up <laughs> <laughs> I was like so excited to share the smothered burrito with you it's funny because Jamila was like why do you guys call each other and talk about the new food that just came out <laughs> <laughs> she said this like uh, like a few months ago she's like I would never think about calling my sister and say hey check out this new burrito or check out this new hamburger from Red Robin yeah and that's like Going through the draft, you're like, ooh, something new. <laughs> and so Brad called me, he's like, this is the most amazing burrito in the world. Yeah, and I even like ran around town after I went to Taco Bell. Um, I can't remember if I did clothes shopping that day or what, but. I know we went to Hoi before that. We at Hoi maybe you weren't hungry, you just had to buy it. <laughs> I had to buy it. <laughs> and I was like, no, we could buy it later. I was like, no, I want it now. <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't going to eat it then I just didn't want to pass it up I guess but um, yeah I think we went to a few good ones maybe but uh, that's what, where I found this thing and um, Karen actually found that and the NES adapter thing I was just I didn't see any, anything she found it but we had got some other burrito and as soon as we got home I stripped down to my underwear and <laughs> sat in my bed turned the air conditioner <laughs> on got my whole ritual going <laughs> turned on a good movie yeah <laughs> turned on a movie and then I um, 
started uh, uh, the first bite. I was like, <laughs> what the hell is this? And um, I was just going to only take one bite, because, and I was going to get carrying the rest, but she she took too long coming in there. <laughs> she was like helping the kids or something. And I, the burrito kept getting smaller and smaller. <laughs> so this burrito from Taco Bell is stuffed with your choice of meat. Of course, beef is the best because it's the worst for you. <laughs> Not sure. She's always like, at a certain time of the month, she's always craving sweets. So you know it's coming because Jamila craves chocolate when it's her time. So Naja's been craving sweets, like, intensely. She's like, I need some <laughs> ice cream. And I'm like, oh, she's going to coming any month now. You know, that's the best time it's supposed to be in pleasure with them. Gross. Because <laughs> they're extra sensitive. I don't know that. Um, so the smothered burrito. <laughs> <laughs> This mother taco. <laughs> <laughs> so this mother burrito. Uh, a great segue. <laughs> it's got um, beef, uh, rice inside, uh, beans, probably, <laughs> and, and it's and it's covered with this red enchilada sauce and this melted cheese and it's. Baja I, sauce. Uh, I got a side it's of got baja sauce. In it too. Does it? Mm. Oh. I bought a side of creamy jalapeno sauce. I mean, that's what it's called. It's got that in it. And so I um, took a bite, and I was like, I love this thing. And I gave it to <laughs> Willie. I, I gave it to Willie. I said, you finish this. And it's huge. Like, it huge. So I said, you finish this. And I gave him his you know, usual five-layer burrito. And I had gotten just two of the... Um, Whose mouth is watering now? Oh, <laughs> mine is. You could tell it's dripping. Uh, and I, I guess got, what talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I got uh, two fresco styled steak tacos, and I was like, "This is bullshit." <laughs> <laughs> I want this burrito. <laughs> Their fresco tacos are fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are. I remember <laughs> when I get on my healthy kicks, like not eating right but like straight healthy when you don't when you just hate yourself after the week <laughs> is done because you have a big headache yeah and I, I got those fresco tacos because they're supposed to be the best for you they suck dick yeah they do so um actually Jamila made this really good meal last night however I think it gave us both the runs it was still really good. It was um, <laughs> it was a casserole with uh, baked chicken like she took chicken and cauliflower and mixed it together oh, yeah. totally and um, put cheese, uh, okay. cheese um, bacon crumbles, onions, and... She didn't get the red dyed bacon. Did no. Real bacon? The real bacon bits in yeah. the pouch. Oh, fuck yeah. Uh, green onions, white onions, and ranch. <laughs> and ranch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm just delirious since I've been up since 3 o'clock this morning and it's almost 11 so uh, and she mixed it with that you know the make your own ranch the powder oh fuck yeah the buttermilk <laughs> ranch packet yeah and that was good but, the yeah I mean it was like I was pooping pee it was like it, that's water and I was like why is it like this <laughs> from the ranch packet I don't know we made um that chicken curry last night oh that's tight pretty good yeah so um so I went from you know I told you I gained more weight than I thought from Vegas I don't know what happened but I don't know what happened you were like buffet 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 <laughs> no but remember I weighed myself later oh, yeah, yeah. and I wasn't I was only like 3 or 5 but for some reason I jumped up to 321 mm -hmm. kind of find out our scale was broken uh -huh. mm -hmm. so we got into scale and um, only 310 oh, so only I'm uh, 345 I went back up a few pounds that is let loose <laughs> um, huh. what, what I was doing is I was doing a, a banana in the morning um, Two hamburgers from McDonald's for lunch, and then just a sensible dinner. But I've just been just letting loose, getting like uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. I went and um, put a, a buffet on my credit card. Mm -hmm. I just like, hey, I wanted to go eat at a buffet. <laughs> and I got the 
Super Canton 120 Super Buffet. Which one's that? It's over off of How? Uh, How? Oh, that's that's place is rock cut, dude. No, it's not as bad as Chow, uh, Chow King because you get um <clears throat> uh, Mongolian barbecue there, and you could also get uh, sushi. They had Ebby, and I just ate that with some noodles. What's really been helping me is Jamila's been really sticking to it because usually she'll fall off, and I'm like, fuck it. So uh, she, like even when uh. She's a calorie counter now, which I always used to be a calorie counter, and she'd get mad at me for, why would you tell her there's 3,000 calories in this meal I'm about to eat? And yeah. she'd get mad. But now she's been calorie counting, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, even when I'm carrying it good like that, I'm always the one who, like, falls off. No, you're the breaker. Yeah, I'm like, and it's usually always after sex, too. <laughs> that's, like, the best time to go out and get jumped. It is. It's, it's, like, it'll be, like, midnight, and we're like. It's science. You want to. Uh, McDonald's is like <laughs> two minutes away. <laughs> Good bad thing. All right, so that's going to wrap up episode sixteen of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. Happy hunting.